Welcome to Simple Entomology for the Fly Tire and Fly Fisherman. I'm Raj Kletke. We'll be mainly tying some simple flies, but I hope to share with you some entomology knowledge that will help your fly tying and perhaps even your fly fishing. So let's get started. You arrive at this stream. Which fly do you put on first? If you're familiar with the stream, you already know the answer to that. If it's a new stream, you may have stopped at a local fly shop and read the internet about this particular stream. Otherwise, that decision is based upon many factors, including the nature of the stream itself, the time of year, the time of day. In other words, basic entomology. If there's not an active hatch to match, your observation of your surroundings helps determine which fly to start with. A lot of that decision is based upon what you feel like fishing with. I like fishing with dry flies, particularly on small, relatively shallow streams. Perhaps you saw a beetle on that log, perhaps you didn't. But a beetle is always a good exploratory fly in the middle of the summer when there's no obvious hatch. Let's tie a simple beetle. I'm tying this beetle on a size 14 standard dry fly hook. Those of you that have seen my previous videos know that I like to leave a little bit of bare hook shank near the eye of the hook and using tension on the tail of the thread, holding it at approximately 45 degrees, allows me to lay down a nice smooth thread base before breaking the thread off parallel to the hook shank. Since I'll be tying a beetle, I happen to like black foam. I usually use the two millimeter, although I'm sure the three millimeter would be fine. I cut it the width of the hook gap and then trim the foam so I have a point. Taking the bulk of the foam behind the hook and the foam on the near side of the hook, I tie it tightly in place. Foam tends to roll around the hook, so be sure to start on the near side of the hook and then it'll roll to the top of the hook. At that point, you can take it back as far as you want on the hook bend. I usually take it just to or just after the hook bend before tying it tightly into place. Then dubbing is next. After dampening the thread with water for better adherence by the dubbing, I apply the dubbing in the standard fashion. I'm using a Hair's Ear Plus dubbing in this particular case. The critical feature, I feel, is the spikiness. Note number of guard hairs that you see in this dubbing. As I wrap it, I think you can see the guard hairs more. In general, the more spiky it is, the better I like it. We'll explain why I think this is important shortly. Add additional dubbing as necessary to extend the body closer to the eye of the hook. I usually leave approximately two eye lengths. I then fold the foam forward and bind down tightly, being sure to keep the foam at the top of the hook. Don't let it slide to the far side of the hook. I like adding yellow polypropylene yarn as an indicator, although this is optional. I bind it down to the exact same site that I bound the foam forward before tying off the thread at the eye of the hook. You can do the final tie off with multiple half hitches. I happen to prefer the whip finisher. Those who have watched my previous videos know that I like using the whip finisher only three times around on the first tie off because this allows me to easily tighten the thread and get everything under control. I then will usually put on a second whip finish of three or more times, which precludes me needing to use head cement. After cutting the thread, I can then cut my indicator and the foam. I commonly turn it upside down so I can cut it even with the eye of the hook and then trim the head to match 
what I envision a beetle to look like. And that's the finished, very simple foam beetle. What about the size and shape of my simple foam beetle? There are literally thousands of beetles out there. Commonly, trout are taking beetles opportunistically, and size and shape is not that critical. I generally tie my simple foam beetle in sizes 14 and 16, and these have served me well. In that rare situation where you want to change the size or shape of the beetle, there is an easy variation that you can tie. The easiest way to change the size and shape of the beetle is to simply pre-cut the foam to the appropriate size and shape, and then simply mount it in place on the appropriate sized hook. Last fall there was a box elder explosion, so I would cut some foam into the shape of a box elder bug. Since box elder bugs have orange on them, I used orange thread as the body and simply mounted the foam on top of the hook on top of orange thread. As the tail of the foam is not tied down, it will tend to fold up. I put super glue along the body and held the flap in place. And this seemed to work well. The fish did not seem to mind that it was a very poorly tied fly. Hewitt was a famous fisherman and fly tire of the 20s, 30s, and 40s. He listed a number of factors that he felt made flies effective for trout. How well does my simple foam beetle stack up to Hewitt's factors? When my beetle first comes in view of the trout, the light effect is that of a simple blob on the water. As it gets closer, it does have a sharp silhouette, just like the natural beetle. The natural beetle just floats with the current, so I fish my beetle dead drift. The natural beetle may wiggle its legs some, which sets up small eddy currents. In other words, micro movement, which helps distinguish this as a living organism and therefore something the trout would like to eat. The spikiness of the dubbing that I put on tends to make the same kind of micro movement. You control your tippet visibility and the size, shape, and color of an organism that a trout is feeding on opportunistically is not as critical when there are thousands of different kinds of beetles and you're not trying to match a specific hatch. So I think my simple foam beetle fits Hewitt's factors well. Consequently, I fish it with confidence and it has caught many fish for me. For still water use, you may want to add some rubber legs for a little more action or micro movement. Simply lightly tie the legs into the top of the fly, then pull them into appropriate position on the side of the fly before binding them tightly in place. Once they're bound tightly in place, they can be cut to the proper length. For a rubber spider, which is an excellent bluegill fly, I would use legs this size but skip the dubbing. For a beetle, I would keep the dubbing and use a thinner rubber leg. Beetles are one of the big three terrestrials that I fish with. Ants may be even more important than beetles, and we will talk about ants and tie ants in part two. See you soon.